You know how they put there the house that fried chicken built? They should then cross that out, say the house that crispy pata usurped. <laughs> hey everybody, call me Felix, and today we're back on the chain in the house that fried chicken built, or at least one of the franchises that claims that title, at Robinson's Ilocos Place Mall in San Nicolas. Of course, I'm talking about Max's Restaurant. Long before Jollibee became synonymous as the Philippines' best-known fried chicken, Max's has been around since 1945, and since has branched out with plenty of locations nationwide in the United States, Canada, and even the United Arab Emirates. There are also a number of copycat recipes of Max's famous fried chicken, usually calling for an intensive brining process and a baseline recipe of salt, pepper, and bay leaves, with other permutations here and there. My personal experience with Max's has been meh terrific, as in so-so. The first several times I've had Max's in California, I was unimpressed, and in the first two times I've had Max's in the Philippines, I found the quality uneven, as is typical for global chain restaurants. My father, however, who has deep nostalgic fondness for Max's, says the recipe just isn't the same as before. On trying Max's out for the third time in the Philippines, will the third time be the charm, or will Max's fried chicken turn out to be as boring and misunderstood as I found out to be in past experiences? We're also trying out some other Max's specialties, such as fresh lupiang ubod, beef kare kare, sizzling tofu, and crispy pata. There was one dish we felt in particular that should be called the dish that usurped the house Max's fried chicken originally built. Can you figure out what that was? So keep on watching to find out. On with the review of Max's. Okay, Warren, is this your first time at right, Max's? Yeah, this is my first time eating, eating here in Max's Robinson. And then, you never had Max's in your life. Yeah, exactly. Max's fried chicken. What yeah. have you heard about it though? Uh, I think Max's is the one uh, most popular restaurant here. Uh, most popular sit down restaurant? Uh huh. Yeah, probably. I think so. And then let's see uh -huh. who's better fried chicken. Is it Max's or Shakey's? He's yeah. still got Shakey's <laughs> in his mind, this boy. So you can basically call yourself a spring chicken as mm -hmm. far as like um, talking about Max's, right? So, Warren, do you like breaded chicken though? Or do you like not breaded chicken? What? Breaded chicken? Breaded chicken? No, no, no. Do you like your chicken breaded? Meaning like Jollibee or do you like it without the batter? Um, I like without. Without right, the so batter. Like this one. So it tasted the okay. so, so you like this one. It's gonna be so good. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Ooh. I'm gonna. Okay, <laughs> but that, that is the really old chicken though, because he remembers had, this. Yeah. yeah. Max is, he remembers what it was like 50 years ago. Oh, and they never changed the recipe? I ordered the whole chicken. <laughs> and crispy. Uh, with with the, and mm -hmm. gizzard. Hmm? Yeah. Inside? No. Yeah. Oh, separate? Yeah. Oh. yeah. So and back in the old days, they used to serve the gizzards and the livers separate. Because uh, I have a sweetheart before he, uh, he, got ma she got money and she, <laughs> she, she pitched me and uh, I picked the best one. Yeah. <laughs> so this was Max's at the old, the original, right? So Max's was a date, date spot, Anna? Uh, it, it even eat one and a half. What, one and a half chicken? Yeah. yeah. So this was back in like, what, 1970, Dad? So this is like 50 plus years ago? Yes. <laughs> and they haven't changed the recipe since, so it's gotta be a good recipe. But they've expanded the menu greatly though, yeah. I think. But the, the original uh, restaurant, uh, chicken, restaurant chicken in... Uh, the original in Quezon <laughs> City, right? In Quezon City, mm. in Bao. <coughs> okay, but for me, my experience is basically Max's back in... Because they have them in California. Oh, okay. And they're really overpriced for what you get. Yeah. So, um, let me see. Yeah, it were overpriced. And the chicken was dry, it didn't really taste like anything. And then I had it twice here in the Philippines and it was really uneven. What so, I, what I did before is I kind of did a, uh, a life hack to see if I could um, imitate their chicken, how they do it. And the recipe actually calls for like days to be soaked in like brine and all that. So. Because it's all about or, or the maybe not days, but because it's all about the salt, pepper, and bay leaf combination. I mean, there's like no real secret to their chicken. No, but it's, it's just in like, brine, though. They but brine it's in it. the brining. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a secret, but they won't. I mean, the copycat recipe for Max's. So I, so I think I, if I remember right, it's basically shallow frying at relatively lower temperature. It's not like deep frying at really super fat, super high temperature because it's not breaded chicken. Right. 
So it's basically um, shallow frying and then no batter and then it's practically salt, pepper, bay leaf and then there's a little something. And I think there's another another fry. And then there's another fry. Uh -huh. I it's a two fry process. I'm not sure but mm -hmm. yeah. we'll ask the waitress. <laughs> yeah, she'll reveal all the secrets, everybody. Yeah, we're all in, we're all in good there. Yeah, so we're having a pale pilsen already for lunch. Yay! Okay, so here, here we have here some fresh lumpiang ubon. So this is made out of young coconuts. So there should be some meat in here. There's some lettuce here. There should be some crunchy bits in here. There's some carrots. Yeah, there you can see right there. There's your young coconut. So that should give you some nice variance of texture. And you should put it in this peanutty sauce. Mm. I think you have to get into the heart of darkness to really get a good um, bite of this. Right away I get like the savory note already from the ground meat in there. I think it has to be pork. I think I need to use my spoon. So I can get more of that sauce in there. And then get that more incorporated. There you go. I'm really, the coconut is almost like, um, kind of like a water chestnut sort of thing going for it. Um, sort of that texture. I'm getting some shrimp in there too. Like pork and shrimp. And then the crepe is soft, a little bit doughy, which is what you want. A little bit of bounce there as well. But yeah, I'm also getting like hits of garlic in there as well. So the ubo doesn't really take on a big taste. It's really just a textural sort of thing. And you're getting more of a garlic, getting more of the meat and shrimp. For me, I think if you put a little more crunch and a little more peanuts, like a little bit of the roasted peanut, would complete it. I think the lettuce should be more dispersed though. But all in all the flavors are right there. Just needs a little more crunch with the peanut and then it needs a little more crunch with the lettuce I think will complete that um, taste. So dad I guess took umbrage to what I was saying <laughs> earlier so he's gonna try it for you. Let me taste if you're lying. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Foodie. What's that little... Mmm, you look like you're taking a back there. I can see like that. Um. Partially, it's true. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was right, huh? Only I say it's good. Can you describe what's going on or no? I, I will. Oh, Alright, guys. Um, <laughs> so, this is a fresh lumpia, right? So, when I first um, taste it... <laughs> It tastes like <laughs> what? A fresh macaroni. What? <laughs> okay, Warren, you're not gonna take my job soon. No, I'm just kidding. So he's thinking the wrapper tastes like pasta, basically. I mean, it's not the first time you've gotten something like a miss. No. I mean, you were even closer. Remember, we tried that ice cream at Jotu, the vanilla ice cream. You were closer to that with Ensure than. <laughs> <laughs> you still remember that time about the vanilla ice cream, don't we? It tastes like insurer. <laughs> Why are you tasting insurer? He's got he's got underlying bone problems that he's not wasn't want to discuss. I'm just saying the truth, though. I'm just saying the truth. Well, that's just your opinion based off like how what your taste experience yeah, is like. Opinion. I know, but it's, it's limited by like what your taste experience is like, though. <laughs> to compare it to things, that's the thing. <laughs> and you had to try... It is right. It did taste like Ensure. Vanilla. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it does taste a bit like Ensure, it's just that... <laughs> it's just funny that that's the toast. Yeah. That was his comparable. It was the, basically it. Yeah. Okay. So I'll have Warren finish this and then we'll get to our other food. Yay. Alright, cynical curmudgeonly dad. Only got a half chicken for himself. So he wants to try it out first before getting a whole one. To see if it's got the magic. What do you say, old man? The magic? Is it back? <laughs> oh man, the look on his face. The magic of Max in the old days is gone. 
Oh. Okay, our Instagram bonanza done. Or at least I think it's done. Of course, we have to get a fried chick, whole fried chicken. There's oh, some yeah. pancit canton. There's some sizzling tofu. It's not quite sizzling anymore, but it was hot. And it's still hot. Kare kare is there. It, it looked deceptive to me because look at the broth here. It looks soupier than I thought. Oh, there's a stew there. So I thought it looked like Mickey. Isn't that strange? And then this is the sinigang bangus with belly. Ooh, look at the belly. Now, the real test, of course, is to get some fried chicken. Ooh, it came off the bone. That's a good sign. So I'm cheating here by getting on this end with warrants because this one looked like the better one. I only like thighs and drumsticks. And like I said in previous vlogs, I do not like breast meat. Americans love breast meat and I always say sucker. You got the most, the biggest part of it, but it's also the driest thing. And of course they have different sauces, but you have to try it with sauce. So let's try it without, because I think that's always the best barometer if you feel like a chicken. So for me, I like my skin a little glossier if you're trying to do so savory for me. Has like the better skin texture. You can see this is a little bit flabbier. There's a light crunch. And it releases more like salt and pepper. So it's just like brine, basically. But you did see that it did fall off the bone. The juiciness <laughs> test here. Um, it's not like super juicy, but it does taste fresh. The chicken. And this is the big size, the family size. Which for me, maybe I can finish the whole thing. Why well, hello there. So as you can see here, Warren is hard at work. They need a Instagram of the crispy pata, yeah. Um, so back to the chicken. Um, it's not like the super juiciest, plumpest chicken, but it tastes fresh, which is good. Um, it's got a nice flavor of like, just really simple. So there's more of like a salt brine sort of taste. You can tell it's been brine a bit. The seasoning for me, for me is really plain, but compare this to savory that we had here in Ilocos, the thigh and the drumstick are on point as far as the cooking. The savory is unfortunately the thigh was dry and that's always for a bad foreboding, right? But here, Pretty soft. And it didn't need sauce on it yet. <laughs> That's your first taste of Max's fried chicken. What do you think, Warren? JP is keen to know. <laughs> is it dry? What is that face? Yeah, literally it's dry. It is? Mm hmm. Oh, dry. That's a so, <laughs> I'm gonna take some of our crispy pata. Look at that skin. So this is the other thing you should get. I get, um, I had the crispy pata at Max's back in the States and it's pretty good. This is the first time I've had it. The third try here in the Philippines. So let's give this a whirl. So this is pretty solid. I mean, I got, of course, the best piece here with the skin, some meat. So um, I think it's this bug snack. It's really good. Hmm, I think bug standard for me. But here you go. Five. Hot sauce. Oh, you got it. Let's put some on the side here. Yes, a lot. So I think the second time I've had Maxis in the Philippines. What made the chicken better for me was to douse it with so much hot sauce and so on because the flavor, of course, really simple. There we go, ton of sauce. I wish the sauce was a little bit bolder with like the sourness. One thing I like about it is kind of like that fruity, like a fruity sourness that you get, or not fruity sourness, a fruitiness you get from the Sinning Labuyo. 
But what I'm getting more of is the little bit of heat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, I want that to be more punchy with the spice. A little uh, more punchy with the sour in particular, I should say. Spice, there's just like a nice little pleasant heat. It's nothing that's too crazy. But it basically that heat kind of, or the acidity kind of gets you like back of the tongue sort of thing. Whereas front of the tongue, you don't really get a ton of flavor out of that hot sauce. Warren likes the sauce though. Um, for me, it's an okay sauce. Because for me, I like mine a little more um, sour. Because you're not really, you notice though, when you try it, it's almost like water. But at the back, there's like heat, right? There's a little bit of heat. Is that the same for you? Um, because I can, it's, I can feel the heat though. The thing is, the thing can do sauce better to use when you eat chicken. <laughs> Okay, JP, you've been one of the staunchest, like, <laughs> believers in Max's fried chicken. And it's not that great this time. It's usually better. Oh, oh. It is dry. Maybe it's, um... Thankfully, I don't know what it is. The, Maybe it's the, the pieces that I like in the thigh and the drumstick are not. Maybe but... I mean, it tastes, no, but it, it does taste fresh, Ben. It's just that, I think, no, I don't think it's that. It's just that the, um, the, they got the temperature right when it came to the legs, but with the breast, it was kind of, a little too dry. You think that the chicken's dehydrated? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Even though it's, even though it tastes fresh. Yeah. Because, the savory here in a local Robinson's Locos, the branch tasted like a little bit like you could tell it was in the freezer. But this one doesn't taste. This one does. It tastes fresher. Yeah, ago is better. <laughs> no, he's only being honest, everybody. <laughs> oh, there's some sweet potato fries. That's right. Camote fries. What's that food? Hmm. It's clocking up. I think it had the fries have been sitting out a little bit. But so there's no real thick, like, crunchy shell there. Mm. For shame. Okay. Um, what have we tried and what haven't we tried? I think we get some sizzling tofu. So, I think back home in the States you can get pork sisig, but over here it's only chicken sisig and sizzling tofu. It looks like wagyu cubes. Wagyu cubes? Mm -hmm. Well, be well I mean, it is cubed. <laughs> For me, what makes it more irresistible if there was like a sauce on the bottom and then like when you scoop up that tofu, there's like that twang and the creaminess. Um, I feel like that has reduced some. I want some creaminess a little bit more and then the spiciness, just a wee bit. Because then the tofu eats it all up really well. Creaminess, sourness, and spice, that's what it needs. I should rename this Max's, Max's Crispy Pata. <laughs> crispy Pata is really, good. really, that's a lot better than... That's what chicken. I keep saying, the Crispy yeah, Pata really is good. good. Yeah. And that's just being honest, completely. Yeah. Now, I find it the same thing too in the States when I tried Max's there. That the Crispy Pata tastes better than the, the chicken. The Crispy Pata's not dry, it's very moist. Mm -hmm. It's cooked really good throughout. So I'm surprised that that's, that's the star of the show. Yeah. It's a good one. And they put all kinds of like garlic and some green onion on there. What about I mean, the I've had better, but this one is really solid though. What as far as this is concerned, yeah. So I think the whole thing about it being franchised and then adding stuff to the menu, it just kind of took away the spirit of like real, like real Max's fried chicken. This is the thing, this is the thing I was dreading the most about reviewing Max's. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Like the crispy pata back home in the States at Max's is okay, but this is better. I mean above average crispy pata. Mm. 
Yeah. Someone's writing in the kitchen. Let the trotter end here. Nice and juicy, fatty, crispy. It's very satisfying, the crispy pata. Above average, too. Hmm. Max's crispy pata indeed. Mm -hmm. This is another specialty of theirs. It's beef kare kare. Now, I don't know what happened to the bagong. Right here. It's um, anemic bagong. A different color. Um, so this is what they're known for. So this is a little soupier than kare, uh, bagong. I'm used to at Max's. I think back in the States, it's more of like a, like a roulade sort of thing. So I'm going to mix this up because I don't have rice, as you can see. I think I'm going to be still hungry after all this. This doesn't seem like a lot of food for me. <laughs> anyway. Get some oxtail here. Mm, I think I'll just get whatever I like. There we go. I'm not a fan of karakare in general. But meat's quite good. I think the peanut sauce could use um, more of a more robust peanut character. It just feels more um, pureed. The bagoong, I wish, was earthier. It get, you're getting a little more of a fishy, just a slight fishiness, but I want it a little more earthy, um, more savory, an earthy type of savory. That's what I'm looking for with like fresh house-made bagong. I'm gonna try some of that tripe. The tripe is clean too. So I like the curry curry. The only thing is, needs more robust peanut flavor. It's uh, not, thankfully it's not too soupy, because I what turns me off about karakare sometimes is if it's a little liquidy. It's still full in like the mouthfeel, but I want this thicker. And then I also want this to be earthier with the savoriness. And the portion for a half is kind of smallish for me. Okay, I think, I feel here the portions are a teensy bit small. I'm not being sarcastic or anything, but I really mean that they're a teensy bit small. I don't know if it's because I'm raging hungry or what, but... What do you like? I mean, for what you pay for here, I would expect a little bit bigger, like 25% bigger portion. So here, we have panse canton. There's some, um, looks like liver in here. I really, I like, I like the panse where people put um, innards in there. There you go. I didn't get some of those vegetables in there. So I just taste the noodle, just taste the liver. A bit of the calamansi, just enough cabbage in there just to get some chew. Nothing really memorable about it, but it is, like I always say, pancit is like one of those change of pace sort of dishes when you're eating a lot of meat, especially fried meat. Okay, everybody. Um, I'm still hungry, as it were. So, I'm having hollow hollow. Look at the umbrella, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's a new local snore tape thing, but they love their umbrellas, putting umbrellas in things. It's rainy oh yeah, it's rainy season. Yeah, <laughs> this will keep you very dry and keep you very dry. Uh, okay, what do we have here? So here's the hollow. So here is the hollow hollow. Special. Now it's extra special because you know what they put on here? Grated cheese. The Mube ice cream. There's some big old palm fruit here. There's some sweet corn. Oh boy. Sweet corn. Um, there's some red mung bean here. That's a flan. There's some other colorful kaong here. Yay. Um... The only thing is, I'm, I'm being very careful here. Make sure that I can just get that ice cream incorporated in there. Oh. <laughs> I feel like there's a disc of ice in here, so then putting tilting what's one side tilts the other side like that. I'm 
not really a fan of putting corn in Halo Halo. And that corn, corn for some wait, wait. That corn for some reason is a little salty. And um, which I guess you get the idea that it's supposed to contrast with the sugary sweetness, because I think there's more sugar in here. And um, that's the reason why their ube ice cream kind of tastes a little bit more robust because it's sugary. No, oh, I see why. That saltiness is coming from the cheese. And then with the corn. It tastes quite savory. <laughs> Warren, I did it again. I called the hollow hollow, it tastes savory. Savory? Oh. <laughs> Is that 10 times now? So savory. Yeah, savory. yeah, I know. I put savory, savory in the same word. Like, I, I feel like it maxes here. I've said savory so much. This is this, the thing is, the cheese, adding the cheese and the corn kind of makes it taste like not dessert because it adds some saltiness. Mm. So. I think you need one of those counter bells. Oh, how many times you said savory? So I'd be like. Ding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, savory is like down the down the. This aisle outside, too. Warren, you don't look satisfied. Me? I said you don't look satisfied. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so that means no, you're not satisfied. Oh. So Warren had the thumbs down or what? Um, 50-50. So that means so-so. Mm-hmm. So how come the... the, the <laughs> what are you doing tossing an umbrella oh, around? My face. There you go. Oh. The, okay. <laughs> At least Ben's having fun. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Ben's having fun. He's satisfied even though the food is so-so. Oh, so. like That's thing. all I eat is corn. I've been dipping my spoon in here. I didn't get no jelly, no nothing, just corn. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need to mix it better. <laughs> you know, the leche flan's all dissolved. Hey, maybe what happened to my leche flan? I'm thinking the oh. same thing happened to me too. Warren, <laughs> what do we think about Max's? Is our <laughs> review? 50-50. Uh, well, so, so Warren doesn't quite know the expression of so-so. So, so when so, he said 50-50, so, so, so. basically 50 good, 50 bad, that just yeah. means so-so. Um, I'm gonna echo that and say, yeah, Warren's about right. Max's versus Savory, if you wanna, if you wanna compare the two. Savory, I feel like, on a good day destroys Max's on a good day too. Because I like that there's more flavor. It's easy. Oh yeah, I haven't done savory yet. All right. Um, but here in the Locos, the branch here, I guess we had a bad day at savory too with the chicken because it, theirs tasted a little bit more refrigerated. And then here at Max's, the Locos tasted fresher. Eh, okay. Um, so this is the staunchest supporter of Max's chicken <laughs> because he doesn't like Breading on his fried chicken, JP yeah, doesn't I don't, like it. I don't. Yeah. But this time it wasn't a winner, guys. Um, to be honest with you, yeah. I think the same food at Kamalig might have been. Oh better, yeah, Kamalig. Better, oh yeah. Oh, Kamalig is better price-wise, and also might be a little bit better. Price-wise, you would have spent the same and probably been more no, satisfied. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's a little cheaper, isn't it? I love. I think it's a lot cheaper. I gotta remember how much we spent there. Okay. It's usually like two seven, two five, or three. I think we have, like before we used to spend just about like three or three five. If you're not subscribed yet, are oh you good, gosh. bro? Are you good, bro? I'm just asking. Are you good, bro? Are you good, bro? Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a very abrupt. And please hit the segue. subscribe button. That's it. That's all. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. That's our Max's review. Yeah. Pretty decent. I mean, so-so. Well, I think it's the most accurate thing. You know. Food was eh, okay, but nothing really noteworthy, unfortunately. Um, like I said, savory on a good day destroys Max's on another day. So on that shocking note, Warren gave you the spiel. So until then, till the next video, keep cool but care. Remember, the Empire never ended.